His are tales of redemption, crime, and violence. Lots and lots of violence. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Martin Scorsese movies. <laughs> really? <laughs> for this list, we've chosen the cinematic landmarks of Martin Scorsese's career, the best display his talents as a director, and everything that's quintessentially Scorsese. Oh, and just a heads up, you can expect some mature content. Trust us, it's gonna get messy. Number 10, Hugo. This 3D extravaganza proves Scorsese doesn't need guns, violence, and bad language to captivate audiences. Because this might be an adventure, and I've never had one before, outside of books at least. Young Hugo is an orphaned mechanical genius who befriends the goddaughter of an evil toy maker. Is it a secret? Yes. Oh good, I love secrets. Tell me this instant. Plenty of top-notch talent, dramatic confrontations, and intriguing portrayals of fantasy themes make this family-friendly epic gripping right to the very end. And definitely a standout on Scorsese's resume. My friends, come and dream with me. And you, whatever your name is, what is your name? Number nine, Gangs of New York. Amsterdam, sir. Amsterdam. I'm New York. This movie is a great example of how Scorsese can take his trademark cutthroat gangster themes and successfully apply them to different eras. On my challenge, by the ancient laws of combat, we are met at this chosen ground to settle for good and all. Who holds sway over the five points? As Amsterdam Valen returns to New York, seeking vengeance for his father's murder, we're sucked into the gang world and all its betrayal, sex, and slaughter. You tell young Valen, I'm gonna paint Paradise Square with his blood. Two coats. Gangs of New York also exemplifies Scorsese's ability to create eerie personas, especially that of Daniel day Lewis's Bill the Butcher Cutting. Seriously, this guy is terrifying. <laughs> Number eight, The King of Comedy. It's terrific, it's great. In this film, longtime Scorsese collaborator Robert De Niro plays Rupert Pupkin. Will you please give your warmest welcome to the newest King of Comedy, Rupert Pupkin. A goofy, obsessive, and mediocre comic who's infatuated with the idea of appearing on the comedy show run by Jerry Lewis's Jerry Langford. Unlike many Scorsese films, this one's a comedy. Say no more, I understand. Which gives Scorsese free reign to explore his actor's versatility. Yeah, I know. You look wonderful too, Jerry. I wasn't leaving you out. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah. <laughs> and although it's a different take on the American dream, it still has Scorsese's signature realism all over it. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs> Number seven, The Aviator. Aviation films may not be everyone's cup of tea, but this retelling of Howard Hughes' life is truly riveting. I, I don't know if you remember me. My name's Howard Hughes. I was wondering if I could have a moment of your time. Closely following each of Hughes' brilliant ideas, as well as his descent into madness, Scorsese gives us a thorough story that manages to keep us intrigued. So you want me to bribe senators? I don't want them bribed, Jack. I want it done legally. I want them bought. Even though it is over two and a half hours long. <laughs> DiCaprio's brilliant characterization. The way of the future. And Scorsese's use of dramatic angles all make this an integral addition to the filmmaker's legacy. He is to open the bag with his right hand and hold the bag out to me at a 45 degree angle so I may reach into the bag without, <laughs> without touching the paper. Number six, Mean Streets. You don't make up for your sins in the church. You do it in the streets. You do it at home. The rest is bullshit and you know it. When it comes to the mob narrative, New York City is legendary on the silver screen. And this movie epitomizes why. It follows Charlie, played by Harvey Keitel, as he tries to climb the wise guy ladder 
What do you come out going shopping when you owe somebody money, Johnny? That ain't right. What are you talking How much you got there? Charlie, I'm gonna pay him next week. I'm gonna pay you. You're going you and you're going you go and you don't do nothing. What How much you got there? By helping to write the screenplay, Scorsese lays down a perfect framework that allows him to experiment with some of his earliest gangland directorial techniques. Watch yourself. Don't spoil anything. Honorable men go with honorable men. And with it, he brings some truly malevolent characters to the screen. You don't have the guts to use it. I don't, huh? I don't have the guts. Come on, asshole. Come over here. Come over here. I'll put this at your ass. Number five, Casino. I had it down so cold that I was given paradise on earth. I was given one of the biggest casinos in Las Vegas to run, the Tangiers. The gloves are off in this ultra-violent Vegas-based gangster flick. When two mobsters move into the casino grid, we learn that behind the facade of glitter balls and Bellagio water displays is a world of drugs, murder, and two-faced characters. I mean, what's right is right. They don't give a fuck about it. Ah! With Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci re-teamed for another successful outing together, You make me pop your f***ing eye out of your head to protect that piece of shit! Casino doesn't glorify organized crime as much as some other Scorsese movies. Instead, it offers us the grisly truth. Hi. Strip <laughs> Number four, Raging Bull. Never went down, man. He never got me down, right? This is arguably Scorsese's greatest portrayal of Italian-American family life. De Niro plays prize fighter Jake LaMotta, who's an animal in and out of the ring. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Why did you f*** up? Do what? I didn't do anything! I f***ed all of them! What do you want me to say? His temper, paranoia, and downright aggression spell trouble to those closest to him. Me! Kill me! Start here! Kill me first! Do me a f***ing favor! Because you're driving me crazy! Scorsese offers us fly-on-the-wall insights into his broken home, proving that the director knows better than to shoot now, ask questions later, when it comes to delicate storytelling. You want your steak? Bring it over. Bring it over. It's like a piece of charcoal. Bring it over here. You want your steak? Yeah, right yeah. now. Good. Here's your steak. Show me your arm. Flip it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number three. The Departed. When I was your age, they would say we could become cops or criminals. Today, what I'm saying is this. When you're facing a loaded gun, what's the difference? With a complicated plot that sees a mole in the mob and a mole in the police department cross wires, this complex storyline has many great characters to choose from. Unfortunately, this shithole has more leaks than the Iraqi Navy. F yourself. I'm tired for your wife. How's your mother? Good, she's tired from my father. Escaping the usual routine of evil versus evil and giving us something far less black and white. You're lying to me. <sighs> Not exactly. The Departed is another example of how Scorsese can adapt his methods to 21st century expectations. And the result was his long awaited first Best Director Oscar. <laughs> Just kidding, how's your mother? Uh, she's on her way out. We all are. Act accordingly. Someday a real rain will come and wash all this scum off the streets. Number two, Taxi Driver. It's the tale of a Vietnam vet turned late night taxi driver turned vigilante, a man who just can't take the deteriorating concrete jungle of New York. Cabby, just forget about this. It's nothing. Using a layered character like Travis Bickle, Scorsese again offers us a genius critique on the American dream, raising questions about life after war, redemption, and fighting for what you believe in. I just want to go out and, and, you know, like really, really, really do something. With an ambiguous ending that's been torn apart since its release, Taxi Driver has gone down in Hollywood history as one of the greats. You're talking to me? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? Government employees are rocket flying. Before we unveil our number one pick, let's give a shout out to some of our honorable mentions. I'll give you a briefing about the institution before you left. All I know is it's a mental hospital. For the criminally insane. Fear, I suppose, that to remember his name or what he did would mean letting him into our dreams. But in the last year, I'd started to lose that control. I've been seeing the ghosts. You ever notice 
People who see things are always crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye. Wake up, Henry. Number one, Goodfellas. Based on the true story of Henry Hill, this film follows Ray Liotta's journey through the mafia as he bribes, beats, and blabs his way to the top. <laughs> it's gonna be a good summer. <laughs> I'm proud of you. That is a lot of money for a kid like you, all right? Scorsese favorites like Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci round out the cast list and pull out all the stops to show us their trademark crazies. I'm funny how? I mean funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh, I'm here. And amuse you. For us, this film sums up Scorsese perfectly as a filmmaker. It shows off his skills as a storyteller and his ability to make even the most confrontationally violent scenes enticing to watch. As far back as I could remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Do you agree with our list? Maybe. Maybe not. Which Scorsese film got your movie lover motor running? For more top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Take this stiff and pound it up your ass. Hit me again.